here with Ty. Let's start with Sean Cunningham. Hey, Ty. Uh, we've talked a lot about how just, you know, your fit with this team and how quickly you've been able to make an impact. But how impressed were you with the way you played in the fourth quarter, particularly coming back from that injury? Um, you know, I thought it was solid in the fourth. Um, you know, made some plays. It was disappointing in my performance up to that point. So um, I told I told a couple of guys at, at the fourth that I was – uh, it was winning time, so you guys, you guys have seen me throughout the year. Uh, or the, you know, in the short sample, you know, I feel like I uh, make some plays in the fourth quarter um, and it's a swing the game. So, thought I made some big time plays, but um, you know, I was kind of disappointed in my performance up to that point. So, got to uh, got to get in and, and watch film and uh, you know start to figure some stuff out. Hey Ty, physically, just how are you feeling? It, you know, we saw you take another big spill tonight over on the the left side. Um, it's not just your wrist; you took a fall, and it seems like your whole body would probably be hurting after something like that. But how are you feeling physically? Yeah, just a little sore. Uh, you know, they, I mean, obviously the, the uh, injury report just says the wrist, but you know, there's some other stuff. You know, my my butt hurts, <laughs> my my shoulder. A lot of just a lot of parts to me that are, that are sore, um, but you know it just kind of comes with it. You know this is this is uh, kind of my profession now. So um, if I'm if I'm uh, if I'm told I get the choice to play, I got I got to play, and um, I'm a competitor. I love to play basketball. So if you give me the choice, I'm gonna go out there and play. So yesterday I had a full full workout with uh, Rico and and uh, B Jack and a couple guys, and um, you know felt good coming into today and. Treatment's been going well, so um, I'm fine. Just, you know, kind of the bumps and bruises of, uh, of a basketball season. Jason Jones. Hey, Ty, just what did you see from the offense in the two games you were out? And just coming back, what did you look to inject into the team in your, your role, especially knowing in that second half that De'Aaron wasn't going to be playing? Yeah, just uh, stagnation. Uh, the ball's just not been moving. And then our pace has, has been been bad. It's just been bad. Uh, you know, I think with without me, De'Aaron has kind of been asked to to do a lot. And uh, you know, I think you know when he's out the game, I think we and even when he's in the game, sometimes when we're we're getting in our uh, half court offense, and we 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 tend to walk it up. So uh, you know, I was just trying to push the pace um, as best as I could today. So I did a pretty good job. Um, but you know, again, I, I, I understand I get tired too. So I'm um, just trying to play as fast as we can, uh, but, but controlled, but um, you know, fast at the same time. Matt George. Hey Tyrese, obviously your game, and you've talked about it before. You you like to get your teammates involved. Uh, this team is now four and zero when six or more uh, of you score in double figures. What does that just say overall about the team? Um. You know, I, I just think, um, you know, when guys are, are involved, they're – when guys are scoring and getting more more touches, they're just more engaged, more locked in. Um, when you ice guys out and they don't they don't get as many touches and, you know, we turn to one-on-one -on -one basketball and get selfish, um, you know, you guys, guys aren't as engaged. And I feel – I was told growing up that being the point guard was kind of like being the mom of the team. Your job is to keep everybody happy, so – um, you know, I'm just trying to get my teammates touches, keep them involved. And, uh, you know, that, 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 I think that leads to us winning games. Come on. Hi, Tyrese. Uh, great game there in the fourth quarter. Um, <clears throat> you, uh, were pretty vocal on social media a little earlier today regarding some of the events happening in the capital of the country. And I wanted to see if you had anything you wanted to say about that. Yeah, first, I, I appreciate you asking me that question. Um, you know, obviously, what, what is, what's, what's happening right now in our world and, um, you know, what happened today in, in particular is, is nothing but a joke. Um, with everything that's going on, um, you know, the losses of, of uh, many African-American lives and the, the, the plight of, of people of color, and then, um, you know, for, for these human beings to come out and act like they're being discriminated against um, because they lost a, a, a fair election or that they have to wear masks um, is a complete joke. And, uh, you know, I think, um, you know, obviously the, the president's not going to say anything that uh, that means anything. And, um, you know, our, our president-to-be, you know, Joe Biden comes out and, and says, you know, America 
we're better than this. This is un-American. But, you know, to be honest, it feel, I'm 20 years old, but I, I feel like this is as uh, American as it gets. Um, you know, it's, I think today was the big of my lifetime, probably the biggest flex of, of white power and white privilege that there is. Um, and, and I say that in the most respectful way possible. I, my mom's white. My girlfriend's white. Um, you know, I'm just I was taught to, to treat human beings as human beings first um, before anything. So it's, it, it's a joke. Um, it's unbelievable. I sat on my phone today for like an hour and a half trying to come up with something I could say that I, I that I thought would that would would make sense Just trying to get my my feelings out there. And I couldn't do it because I never felt like I could really put it into a tweet. Um, so I just replied to, you know, a couple a couple of, uh, of things said by, by people in the past just to, you know, kind of point out the, you know, the irony of what's being said. And then, you know, I, I know you, I didn't mention this, but, you know, yesterday, Jacob Blake, you know, my home state, um, you know, nothing happens. You know, Rustin Chesky does not get charged um, for paralyzing a man. Um, and, you know, I, I can't even sit here and tell you that's a joke because there's nothing funny about it. Um, it's, it's just a shame. Uh, it's just an, another example of um, this country failing uh, African Americans and people of color, and it's it's just a disappointment. Um, and I think as, as African Americans, I don't know how others felt, but this kind of has become a trend. Something that it's crazy that I that I see this, and other African Americans and people of color see this, and they don't they're not surprised. And there's a problem there. It's a systematic problem, and something that needs to be figured out. And um, you know, I'm glad that I I play in the best league in the world somewhere where I can come out and uh, speak about how I feel and what's important. Um, so I'm just going to con continue to do that and, um, you know, let my mind be heard. I'm 20 years old. I'm, I'm not a politician. I don't have all the answers to, um, you know, a lot of, a lot of things, but, um, you know, I, I believe in human rights and human decency and uh, that's obviously not being shown right now. All right, let's do a couple more. Jason Anderson. Uh, Ty, you know what, man? I was going to ask you about assists and turnovers, but um, I'm just going to leave it. Let you leave it right there, if you want, man. You're uh, you're well spoken, impressive young man. Nice game tonight. Yeah, thank you. I I, I appreciate it. I, uh, um, I, I I I appreciate it. I just I just wanted to address that. I was going to address it before I addressed anything basketball related. But sorry, I get I get going and can't can't stop. So uh, I can I could talk to you guys for hours about it. Sean Cunningham, you wanted to add anything or good? Yeah, I, I was going to add because, um, you know, obviously you felt the way you have. You were vocal on social media and, of course, joining this team. They tend to use their platforms outside of the, the basketball court as well. Um, from a basketball, from a team standpoint, how much did it kind of dominate the conversation today? And was there any thought of get, doing a unified? I saw you guys, you know, obviously interlocking hands at the anthem, but was there uh, any thought to doing any kind of gesture united front with the other team as well? Yeah, I mean, we, we, we talked about it. Um, we talked about it, um, you know, all day. Excuse me. Ever since we got here, we had conversations about it, how we could uh, best affect change. And I, I, I think, um, you know, some people were talking about – or some games in the NBA were talking about not playing, the possibility. Um, I wasn't with that, um, but I, I, I just feel like – us as basketball players, somebody who we have, we all have platforms uh, to use it to the best of our abilities um, and, and continue to use it. This is not something that if we do something one time that we just don't do next game, the game after that, that's, that's not how this works. You know what I'm saying? Like we got to come out and, um, you know, continue to make statements, continue to have those uncomfortable conversations, continue to um, use our platforms to the best of our abilities. And I think there's a lot of different ways you can do that, but, um, you know, just fi just figuring out how, how, how we can do that and uh, just keep having conversations, you know, donating to the right causes. Um, and, and there's a lot of different things we can do with the platforms and, um, you know, the, the, the money and, and just everything that we have as professional basketball players. So, um, you know, I, I, I think we talked about doing a couple of different things. But, yeah, you're right. We linked arms, um, you know, kind of just in unity. Uh, I hope that continues just because um, just, you know, showing that we're, we're all we're all one. We got people of multiple races on this team and, and, in, and in this organization. So I'm um, just proud of our guys and um, hope we can just continue to have those conversations and, uh, you know, keep winning basketball games at the same time. Jason Jones. 
Yeah, Ty, just to follow up on that, you talked to, with your, you know, you talked about being 20 years old, and it seems like none of this is surprising. I think I'm twice your age, at least, more than twice your age, so I can relate to that. But where did you kind of just get the, you know, the encouragement or the empowerment to use your platform and your voice as a 20 year old, where maybe in some cases people your age wouldn't feel as comfortable like to wear the shirt you're wearing today and to say the things that you're saying? Yeah, you know, I think that's a great question. And, and I think I got to answer that as honest as possible. I mean, first and foremost, my, my, my parents, you know, they always have encouraged me to speak my mind, be who I am, no matter the, the situation. So just the way I was brought up. Um, but <clears throat> to be honest with you, I, I grew up um, like a lot of kids born in uh, 2000, early 2000. I grew up a big, you know, LeBron fan. And, uh, you know, I think he's done an amazing job of using his platform to um, you know, better his people, not only his community, but speak out about issues in, in our country. And, um, you know, I think to be able to see him do that, um, I think that that I hope that teaches our next generation. You know, it, it's taught me, but I hope it keeps continuing to teach people to use their voice and uh, use their platform the right way. Um, I'm lucky enough to, you know, have grown up watching him and listening to him. And he's always made good, good points. So I, I think just looking up to him growing up has, has a lot to do with it. You know, and obviously, you know, I'm a historian of sports. So, you know, the Muhammad Ali's of the world and, and uh, you know, just others like that. Um, you know, obviously Colin Kaepernick, uh, what's recently what's recently happened with him. I mean, not recently. It feels like feels like it was yesterday, but it's, I guess it's been, what, four years, five years. So, um, you know, you know, him just, you know, I think those, Kaepernick and LeBron have had a lot to do with it. Just being a fan of sports and um, just, just being able to speak my mind.